This is a demonstration of Fortinet ADVPN running with dual hubs and BGP on loopback. We are running code 7.2.10 and we have a total of 15 overlays. This video will cover all possible failover scenarios that we can think of from the perspective of the hub to spoke, spoke to hub, and also spoke to spoke communication. So let's go ahead and start and talk about our architecture. Well, like I said, we have two hubs. We have hub one and hub two. And in this case, we have two branch sites, branch site A and branch site B. Branch site A has three internet connections. The hub has three internet connections or hub one and hub two has two internet connections. Now in our case, we're doing every possible combination of circuit uh, for redundancy. Obviously in the real world, we typically don't see this, but we wanted to show a very complex environment and how it would react. So with that being said, the way we get 15 overlays, we have ISP1 going to ISP1, ISP1 going to ISP2, ISP2 to, and, and then obviously ISP1 to ISP3, two to one, two to two, two to three, three to one, three to two, three to three. So there are just, there's nine right there. And then we're gonna have six going over to the hub two. Now these ADVPN overlays are encrypted IPsec tunnels. So all this traffic is encrypted, uh, allowing our traffic to traverse from our internal LAN networks um, across to our other branches or our other hubs. With that being said, let's go ahead and start some pings. So as you can see here, we've got some hosts throughout our network and I have them oriented in the same way they are on the the architecture map. So from this host here, we're gonna ping down to um, A. So we're going from the 111 host down to the 22 host. From the 22 host, we're gonna ping back up to our, um, our data center, our hub one. And the reason I'm pinging in both directions because I wanna show the perspective of traffic initiating for each, each direction. Uh, also from uh, branch A, we're gonna ping over to branch B. And then from branch B back to branch A, from branch B up to hub one, and then let's do a hub two back down to branch A. So in our scenario here, uh, we have uh, from the, the branches perspective, we have three internet connections. We have a fiber connection, which is about one millisecond. We have a, a coax connection, which is about 31 milliseconds. And then we have a backup, uh, let's call it an LTE connection, which is about 51 milliseconds. So keep those, keep those uh, latencies in mind. So what we're gonna do on our primary circuit, our fiber circuit, we are going to um, increase the latency here. So let's increase it to 77 milliseconds. But before we do that, let's go look at um, our branch site A. If we look at our branch site A, we have an SD-WAN rule uh, with all of our 15 overlays, and we have a performance SLA that is going toward our hub one and our hub two. If we look at that, the performance SLA um, states that we have an SLA target. We need to be below 100 milliseconds and below 10% packet loss. If we are below those, we use the path. If we go beyond those, the path uh, is no longer in, in use. So if we look at our SD-WAN rules, we can see traffic going from the 22 network up to the, the 111 or even the 33 network is going to go across those VPN tunnels here. And we can see that these are VPN tunnels in our VPN tunnel list here. So those are in fact VPN tunnels. So let's go ahead and uh, get this test going. We can see our latencies are all one millisecond. Thus, we are using our fiber path one. So if we were to increase our latency to 77 milliseconds in each way, 77 times two is 155. The 40 gate should realize that and then shift us over to that secondary path. So if we come in here and look at our SD-WAN, we can see that we are out of SLA. These numbers have gone red. Thus, we're now traversing path number two, which is the coax in 31 milliseconds. Again, if we were to add latency to our secondary path, we should be pushed to our third path. So our secondary path is 30 milliseconds, right? Which is 15 times two. We change it to 150 in each direction. We should spike up to 300 milliseconds. And then the 40 gate should quickly realize that and move us to the 51 millisecond LTE link, which we show here. Again, if we go back to our SD-RAN performance SLAs and refresh the screen, we can see that um, our paths across across uh, path number two, which is WAN two, is in the 300 milliseconds. 
thus out of SLA. So we're using our third over overlay. Now, if we normalize, we can normalize all the way back to the beginning. So let's normalize the primary link and we should jump all the way back uh, to that primary link, which we do one millisecond, one millisecond, one millisecond, one, one millisecond and one millisecond. Now, if we were to add that delay again, and rather than normalizing all the way back to number one, if we would just um, normalize back to number two. So right now, path one is still dirty, path two is dirty, and we're on path three, which is the 50, 53 milliseconds here. Um, this one will never change, right? This is the perspective of a host down here, at branch B, going up to um, the data center one. The circuits that are having errors are these circuits here. Obviously, since these circuits are not traversing that same ISP that's having issues, this is going to be a healthy link and always one millisecond because it's traversing this path. Um, so like I said, rather than jumping back to path number one, let's go reverse sequential order. So if we go to our 300 millisecond link here and drop that down to 30 milliseconds, the FortiGate should then realize that path two is good and drop us back to that 30 millisecond coax path, 30 millisecond, 30 millisecond, 30 millisecond, 30 millisecond. Obviously this still stays untouched because it's not traversing those bad paths. And if we go back and we reduce the latency on our primary fiber circuit back to nothing, we should see everything come back to one millisecond, which we do. One millisecond, one millisecond, one millisecond. So great, that actually proves out our, um, our tests of uh, circuit latency across the primary ISP, circuit latency across the secondary ISP, hub to spoke traffic, spoke to hub traffic, and spoke to spoke traffic as well. All right, so let's talk about a circuit failure. Well, what if we had a fiber cut? What would happen? Well, here's our fiber connection. Let's go ahead and just shut it down. Let's see what happens. Well, obviously the 48 realizes that that circuit's down and shifts us to our secondary path, which is 31 milliseconds. The hubs themselves, since they have VPN established, established tunnels toward us, those VPN tunnels need to time out, which they just did. And now the, the hubs themselves or the data centers themselves realize uh, that the only path back toward our branch is that secondary circuit, which is 31 milliseconds. Very good, let's go ahead and normalize that. So we're gonna bring that circuit back up. So now that circuit's back up. Well, what happens when that circuit comes back up? Well, internet traffic needs to go across it. The VPN tunnel needs to reestablish. BGP needs to reestablish. And then that the BGP peering needs to happen, which is going to advertise our, our networks throughout, um, <clears throat> throughout our domain here. Sure enough, all that has happened and we're back on our fast fiber one millisecond path, as you can see. Um, so that talks about a, a circuit failure. Well, what happens if we don't have a circuit failure? What happens if we're running an ISP here that has DHCP or better yet, what if we change this fiber link uh, to a different provider? What if this becomes AT&T? Well, obviously if we have a new provider, we're gonna get a brand new IP address. So let's change, let's simulate that by changing our address to be, I don't know, that 19. Well, what happens there? We're obviously, you know, we change a provider. Our primary circuit is down. So we traverse to our secondary circuit, which is the 31 milliseconds. And in the background, that um, new circuit is obviously needs to establish a VPN tunnel, needs to establish BGP and routes data share. And sure enough, that all happens. And we're back on our one millisecond path here, as we can see. We'll wait for this guy to come in. Yep, there we are. We're back on our one millisecond path. So there we go. We've talked about an ISP circuit change, changing providers. Uh, we've talked about maybe using an internet provider that is DHCP, right? A coax service or a uh, you know, business, business internet that changes IPs every month or so. There is absolutely nothing you need to do. It is self-healing um, and AD, meaning auto discovery. It will auto discover that change and the VPN tunnels we built. Now, Obviously, the, the hubs themselves are our VPN orchestrators. So what happens if we lose a hub? Well, obviously we lose a hub, we're gonna, the whole data center is gonna be shut down, right? We're not gonna be able to get to our 111 network. But what happens from a site to site perspective? What if we come in here and literally turn off this FortiGate? What happens? Well, obviously 
we can no longer get to the 111 network. So that's going to fail. But look what happened here. Absolutely zero loss. The spokes to spokes have a VPN tunnel that's established and we have set it up to be independent of the hub. So these will stay connected even if we lose a hub. Quite resilient. There you go. That's about 10 minutes uh, in talking about uh, Fortinet ADVPN, how powerful it is, how resilient it is, and how it actually works in real world scenarios.